Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and today I'm going to teach you how to play Star Wars Unlimited. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Why am I doing this? Why are we making another how to play Star Wars Unlimited video? Because there's got to be like 20 out on YouTube already. That's true. But uh, mine's gonna be short. <laughs> mine's gonna be less than eight minutes, all right? So that's, that's my uh, guarantee to you because the way I play is I want somebody to just help me a little bit, get me off the ground, just push me a little bit in the right direction and then I'll take it from there. I like to learn the game as I go. I usually like to play the game with enough knowledge to get by and then just to have the rule book right there. If I glean from the rule book as I play, I learn better. I learn better by doing. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give you just the basics, right? Just the core basics, just enough to get you off the ground. I'm gonna treat you like you've already played a CCG before. I'm gonna treat you like you've already uh, been familiar with things like Magic or Pokemon or other CCGs, other collectible card games. I'm gonna give you just enough information and then I'm gonna tell you after this, use the rule book. I'm not gonna give you every single rule, every single nuance, right? I'm not gonna do any of that. This is just enough information to get you going. I'm done talking, let's go. First of all, everything you need is right here in the two player starter box. And that's what I'm gonna use for this explanation. I'm just gonna assume that this is how uh, we're all starting off together. This has everything you need for a two player game. It's got two decks of cards, two play mats, the rule book, and all the counters. So this is a great, affordable, uh, low cost way to jump into the game and start playing right away. Before starting, each player needs three things. They need a deck of cards, they need counters, and they need a play mat. The paper play mat unfolds just like this, and it has everything labeled nice and easy for you. All your space units are gonna deploy here. Ground units will deploy here. You'll put your base here, your leader here. This is where all your resources go, your deck, your discard pile, and then there's helpful notes for you to follow. Opening up your deck, the first thing you're gonna do is remove your base. It's the horizontal card that looks just like this. Should have a base on it, and it says base up in the corner. And you're gonna place it right on the base square. Then you're gonna remove your leader. It's the card that is also horizontal. Shows a uh, character, it says leader in the corner, and if you flip it over, it's double-sided to uh, show a vertical card. You're gonna start it in its horizontal state and place it right on the leader square. You may also have some upgrades that look like Luke standing upside down or a spaceship on the back. These you're gonna separate off to the side. These are just cards that upgrade your cards after they've been deployed. Of course, then each player is gonna shuffle their deck and they're gonna draw six cards for a starting hand. Each player is gonna look over their first six cards, their starting hand, and they're gonna choose two cards to uh, play down as resources. And so you're gonna choose cards that maybe you have a duplicate of, or cards that have a really high uh, resource cost that you'd think, I don't, I don't think I'll have enough resources to deploy these right away. You'll turn it upside down right like this and place it in your resources square. The way you wanna think about resources is this is your energy or this is your mana. This is what you're going to spend. You're gonna exhaust it. You're gonna spend it so that you can deploy your units. Your ground units have a deploy cost up here. So this would be three resources to deploy, and he has a strength of three, and he has a defense of three. So if I had four resources down in my resource section, I could deploy this system patrol craft. I'm gonna put it here in the space units section. It starts off exhausted, and then I would exhaust all my resources to deploy it. If I were gonna deploy my fleet lieutenant, I need three resources to deploy it. I'm gonna put him over in the ground unit section, exhausted, and then I'll spend my resources to deploy him. On my turn, any of my ground units can attack my opponent's ground units. On my turn, any of my space units can attack my opponent's space units, or my spacecraft can attack my enemy base, or my ground units can attack my enemy base. And the way you win the game is by knocking your opponent's base down uh, all their hit points. So 30 damage on the administrator's tower, would uh, reduce this base to zero and my opponent would win the game. Battle always takes place with one card versus one card and the damage happens simultaneously. So in this instance, Fleet Lieutenant would attack Chewbacca with three, but he has a health of six. 
So he would get three damage tokens. Chewbacca attacks the fleet lieutenant with three. He only has three health, so the fleet lieutenant would go to my discard pile. In space, battle is going to work the same way. Damage is dealt simultaneously. The wing leader attacks the system patrol craft with two, and he has two damage because he has a health of four. And the system patrol craft attacks with a uh, attack of three, and the wing leader only has a health of one, so that would destroy him, and he goes to my discard pile. After each player has drawn their initial hand and laid down their resources, whoever has the initiative token on their playmat, that will be the player that goes first. Star Wars Unlimited is a fast-paced turn-by-turn game. On your turn, you will be able to do any one of these actions. You can play a card from your hand, attack with a unit, use an action ability on a card in play, take the initiative or pass. Playing a card from your hand involves paying the resources and deploying your card exhausted. Attacking is done with any cards that you have that are ready, and they will of course declare an attack against one of your opponent's cards. There are also cards in your deck that are action cards. For instance, this card, Waylay, says that it costs three to deploy, and its action is return a non-leader unit to its owner's hand. Once that action has been completed, you will put this in your discard pile. If you decide on your turn to take the initiative token, that ends your turn. You will end your turn, thus forfeiting any future turns, and you will go first on the next round. You can also just simply say pass. The turn would then go to your opponent, they could take an action and then the action would come back to you. You have an opportunity again to respond or you could simply pass again. Once both players have passed, the turn is over and you restart. Ending the turn goes to the regroup phase. Each player is going to draw two cards. They're going to use any single card from their hand to deploy as a resource. They're going to ready all their cards. And then whoever has the initiative token will go first in the next round. Your leader is also a unit that can be deployed. His deploy cost is usually up there in the corner. Once I have six resources, I can bring Luke out as a unit. I do not need to turn the resources to bring him out. He simply comes out with a strength of four and a health of seven. And his deploy cost just lets me know that I can bring him out. Once he's defeated, he just simply goes back to being my base leader and he goes right back into his square. Now you can say, well, if the whole point of the game is to defeat the enemy base, why wouldn't I just waylay on the base all day long? Well, that's a good question. If you have a ground unit that says Sentinel or a space unit that says Sentinel, this card acts as a guard. So if your opponent is trying to attack uh, one of your units, like maybe your leader, or somebody in space is trying to attack your base, if your card says Sentinel, if you have a single card that says Sentinel, that card acts as a guard. So you can't get through a Sentinel. So if there's a ground unit that says, I want to attack your base and you have a Sentinel in play, they can't. They have to attack your Sentinel first. The exception to that rule is if the attacking card says Saboteur. A Saboteur is sort of like a hidden sniper that can go past a Sentinel. So a Saboteur can attack a base even if there is a Sentinel in the way. Sometimes an action or ability will tell you to deploy experience or a shield on a space unit. You'll simply add the card underneath like this. So experience adds plus one plus one to this fleet lieutenant. Shields uh, just simply adds a shield, which means if there is an attack against this X-Wing, uh, the attack would only destroy the shields and it wouldn't uh, affect the X-Wing's HP at all. And one last tip, you want to deploy as many resources as you can early on in the game. You want to make sure that every opportunity you have to put resources down early uh, is done so that you can get your cards out as quickly as possible because you eventually want to deploy your leader as soon as possible. It's a race to deploy your leader first. Once that leader comes out, that's when the battle really begins. So get those resources out, deploy that leader, and have a lot of fun. Of course, there's plenty of other rules and nuances to the game, and that's when you're gonna refer back to your Spark of Rebellion rule guide. And that's everything. That's everything I wanted to say, and it is such a fun game, such a fun game. I have been playing Star Wars card games since the very beginning. Since the very first uh, Star Wars collectible card game, I still have all my cards, I still have all my decks. I have fond memories uh, playing that game in my kitchen with my brother. Like that was that was the game. And I've also had uh, subsequent games after that. I've had Young Jedi, I've had the board game, I've had the 
uh, the game with the, the dice. <laughs> I had that one too, but I love this one the best. This one is so good. The gameplay is so fast back and forth. Uh, gameplay doesn't feel uh, tired or long. It's not like you're sitting there waiting for your, your opponent to, to do something. You know, the turn base, it goes right back and forth and back and forth quickly. And just the options of, of getting to attack their base or their other characters is a lot of fun. And just seeing all the art. I, I wasn't sure about the art at first. I was kind of hesitant. That was like the one thing that was keeping me away from the, from the game at the very beginning. I, I saw the promo uh, art for the Luke Skywalker and the Han Solo, just those two. And I was like, I don't know if I really like the art, but uh, I don't have those two cards. <laughs> so I've, I, I've actually grown to love the art now and I'm a big fan and I think this game is going to be great. If you have any questions about the game or you want to give your own two cents, let us all know down below and may the force be with you.